We all have stories that we carry with us about how we got injured and the repercussions, the pain, the mobility challenges, the mental fatigue. We often refer to ourselves as having a good leg or a bad leg or having a bad back. And we can take the diagnosis that's been given to us that may have been resolved, but we continue to hold on to being an asthmatic, having arthritis or suffering from digestive issues. I'm anticipating that just hearing these words can feel heavy and may resonate. My guest today, Dr. Michaela Jones, I, we have had several discussions around working with clients and students who've built their stories into their lives and how they cannot escape them. As much as they attend sessions and participate in programs to get better, their intentions are thwarted by the stories that continue to grip them. Please be assured that we are not going to be talking about belittling any experience or hardships that someone may have endured or suffered. Rather, we're looking at how can we change the narrative for a different outcome than we are currently experiencing and, of course, what we want to work towards. We want to shed a light on what it means to go beyond our experiences and to idealize the outcome we truly hold in our hearts. Michaela Jones, MD, is a multi-modality, integrative, holistic health specialist, blending traditional naturopathy, homeopathy, nutrition, emotional release, and energetic work for the health and wellness of body, mind, and spirit. She is a doctor of naturopathy and a board-certified holistic health practitioner with over 25 years of experience in natural health and nutrition. She works with adults and older teens who struggle with chronic issues and mysterious ailments and who've tried everything but still have not found relief. She helps them connect the dots between the physical, emotional, and energetic root causes and helps them address those causing holistically, sorry, helping them address those causes holistically, that's better, so that they can truly <laughs> heal and live symptom-free. You're listening to Be Well with Michelle Greenwell, and this is sponsored by the Cape Breton Tea Company, as well as Dance Debut, Inc. Michaela, thank you so much for coming back. I love having conversations with you, and it's great to have you on the show. Well, thank you for having me again. I enjoy talking to you as well, and I feel like this is something very important that needs to be out there. So I'm, I'm so excited that you chose me to help you get this information out there. So thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. And um, just fitting for, for starting into this, you and I were talking a, a few weeks back when we were talking about these ideas, but in the process of mm -hmm. that, the unwinding trauma cards that I've been working on finally came from the printers. So today um, we're going to launch awesome. them on the podcast. So I'm excited about that. Um, can awesome. I share the first card with you? Yes, please do. I'm excited. All right. So for those people who are listening, these are coasters. So they actually go underneath your cup so that you can infuse the artwork and the affirmations and the herbs that have been embedded into these pictures into whatever you're drinking. So for some people, that may be a really hard stretch. How could that be so powerful? If just putting it underneath helps you to feel better that's awesome if the colors you respond to that's great and if you really want to dive into the intentions you can magnify what you're doing so it'll be up to you how you want to engage so I'm going to hold up the front cover just so you can see it and the colors that are on there and what I'd like to bring forward is the affirmations that are on the back of each coaster so for those people again that are listening in this is bright pink purple, blue, red, yellow. There's orbs, uh, circles of white and yellow, and it's um, kind of got a wave of something kind of coming through the center of it. So the herb that goes with this is sage, which is about insight and perspective. And we're hoping that our conversation today creates that. And the second part is the affirmations. So we've got intention around faith, trust, and resiliency. When we're looking at unwinding a trauma, knowing that we have those pieces in place, faith, trust, and resiliency can make a big difference in how you go forward. And then the rest is stepping forward free from expectations and judgment. 
A lot of time we hold on to those because of our stories. And this is something we're going to explore today. And ready for life to be transformed and empowered is the other part. And thinking about how you may be in one place and how by the end of the conversation today, we hope you're in a new place and we're going to move you forward from that. And that's going to provide transformation and empowerment. So I'm just going to put my tea uh, over top of that coaster today, <laughs> since I can do that. Uh, what tea have you brought with you, Michaela? Well, you know me, you know, I tend to be about, you know, the body and movement of the body information and that kind of stuff. So my tea um, today, which I think was probably the same one I had last time we chatted, is uh, a turmeric and ginger tea. And, you know, turmeric is kind of like the spice of life. So I think this kind of goes along with what we're talking about today. You know, being able to enjoy your life, you know, with free movement, you know, without all of the the stiffness and the baggage of things that, that hold you back. And, you know, sometimes you have to get rid of that information, including the emotional information that I like to call you know, mm -hmm. in order to be able to move forward. So, you know, so I'm drinking turmeric and ginger tea today. <laughs> Beautiful. And I'm, um, emotional inflammation. That yes. is a really interesting way to term it because then you start to really think about how much excess there is. Yes. Interesting. That is a, that, that is a phrase I coined a little while back, you know, in my work with my clients because, I noticed that there was a lot of excess emotions that were attached to certain conditions. And usually the emotions that were involved were very specific types of emotions with very specific types of conditions. So just like when we're working on the physical condition and we have to deal with, you know, particular symptoms, those emotions that were contributing to the inflammation, there were particular groups or subsets of them that we also needed to deal with. So that's why I started calling it emotional inflammation, because you have to deal with all of that excess flair of emotion that's, you know, um, that's embedded into, you know, those organs or those body parts and things of that nature. So, you know, um, I find that that phrase, like you said, really kind of um, describes what we're dealing with. So, yeah, that's why I call it that. <laughs> Lovely. Wow. Okay, we haven't even finished the opening yet. <laughs> oh, and you and I are off and running already. Okay, what mug did you choose today? <laughs> you know, uh, this is going to be, it's going to probably come off as a shameless self-promotion, but I love this mug. This is my own personal mug. <laughs> oh, sweet. This is this is my this is my logo for my company. So I just enjoy this mug so much. So I love the blue and green colors and the gradients of it. So it's my, one of my favorite mugs. So 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 for those people that are listening, the letters I N F L are on it and a leaf. And no, actually, yeah, that kind of confuses people. And you know, and I thought about changing it. It's actually an L, so it's a small L. So it's L N F L for living naturally for life. So perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Um, so what I have in here goes with the new uh, coaster set. And so I have put in the Bredore sunset. So I put it into a clear glass today. It's actually got a Celtic knot on it. Um, but I wanted for those people who are viewing to be able to see the orange color. And what's interesting is going into this glass which I didn't know before is it starts out as a yellow at the bottom and then it gets deeper orange as it climbs up the glass to the top which is uh, then more of a rich orange which is kind of cool and that's just because of that's the frosting pretty. yeah yeah it's pretty um, yeah my tea is actually kind of orange too so I think we're matchies <laughs> we're, we're matching uh the blend has sage and rosemary in it which is an unusual combination for teas and it has green tea and rooibos in it. And it's um, around here. It's reminiscent of what our sunsets look like on Cape Breton Island. So that was a key piece. But the affirmation that goes with this tea is put yourself at ease as you center into the golden memories that rejuvenate and inspire you. And as I was mm -hmm. thinking about the stories that people tell, 
We don't always call them golden memories, but how right. could we pull out the golden memories from something that may not have been so kind to us? And uh, right. that's that's what I know we're going to be discovering today. So, right, you know, and another one of your teas actually spoke to me this morning that I almost brought on with, it. but I'm just going to give you a little plug for your other teas, but. Time Passages was also one of those ones that was kind of jumping mm -hmm. out, you know, because mm -hmm. time is, you know, we need to kind of leave all that old stuff behind and move forward. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that one <laughs> is uh, great for deep breathing, taking that, that mm -hmm. much deeper breath, being really present and um, expansive to what, what you're doing. So thank yes. you for bringing right. time, time Passages forward. I appreciate that because it is one of my favorites. Yeah. All right. So cheers for those people listening. Cheers. We hope you have something to sip on too. And thanks for joining. Mm. I know, right? Ah. Lovely. Okay. So let's dive in then. Do you want to tell me a little bit more about stories that people tell themselves and then what that means for our well-being? And you kind of already started a little bit, but let's, let's dive in deeper. Okay, well, you know, I was thinking about this and uh, some of the most common stories that we tell ourselves is, is about um, being unworthy or worthless or that's my lot in life, okay? Um, I'm bringing this one forward because I see this one a lot with my clients. And what happens is particularly if we tell ourselves that story, it becomes part of our programming. So if we believe we are unworthy or worthless, or that's my lot in life, when things happen later on that are perceived as negative, like you know a health challenge or something of that nature, it can affect our well-being in that if we feel that we're unworthy, we also feel that we're unworthy of healing. Or if we feel that this is just my lot in life, we don't do anything about it because it kind of becomes, oh, well, that's just the way it's supposed to be. And so that can keep us stuck in that place and not taking the actions that we need to do in order to, to heal and move and grow because we become stunted because it becomes part of our programming. So that really affects our well-being in many ways, not only physically, but also emotionally and mentally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when you're working with people, um, sometimes those stories are their stories, but something like arthritis, they'll say, well, my grandmother had it, and my mother had it, so I have it. And they've accepted right, what's right. come down the line generational. Do you want to talk a little bit about what that means in, in a story situation? Sure, sure, absolutely. So um, first of all, um, in answer to the question of can these stories be generational, absolutely, okay? Uh, um, lots of times the stories are... Um, they, they get encoded in our bodies energetically. And if the story started with an ancestor, that energy becomes part of the DNA. So it absolutely can get passed along in DNA, okay? But it can also get passed along culturally and, you know, and, you know within um, the same household. So, you know, if, you're, you know, if your parents had, had a certain condition, that becomes part of their programming and the way they live their lives and the way that, you know, they interact with others, including, you know, their own children will affect those children. And then that becomes part of their offspring's programming as well. So it can pass along a multitude of ways. And, uh, and sometimes these generational stories can go back multiple, multiple, multiple generations with from ancestors you've never interacted with because it, be, it got passed along in the DNA. That energy pattern that became part of their programming just keeps getting passed along. And so the next person that gets it, it's part of their energetic pattern. You know, we can think, we can think of our energy, energy bodies as kind of like a blueprint for our physical bodies. And if that blueprint is flawed, 
the energy body, then the physical body will also be flawed because we're building from that energetic blueprint. Mm -hmm. And you see that in postures because you can have, yes. you know, he walks just like his father or mm -hmm. she always um, holds herself the same way that I saw her grandmother hold herself. You know, those kinds right. of things. Maybe the head's just got a bit of a tilt to the side or sometimes right. uh, the way the, the slouch or the shoulders roll or something like that. And, um, and then that's where the patterning coming down energetically creates the muscles to hold that pattern. Yes. But it's not necessarily that it has to be that way. It's right. just the way it is because of the blueprint. Exactly, exactly. And I'd also like to throw out too, you mentioned arthritis. So that's very interesting that you, that you mentioned that. And any type of itis, just FYI, any type of itis is inflammation of some sort. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so just, I just wanted to kind of put that out there. And on the emotional side of it, the, the emotional inflammation, itis um, is um, some sort of anger, some sort of thing that you're holding in. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily explosive anger. It can be some sort of sadness. It can be some sort of, you know, something that's bubbling beneath the surface and all of those kinds of things. And where the itis is located will make a difference in what emotions that you're dealing with. So I just wanted to kind of share that with mm -hmm. your guests. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's about connecting those dots, you know? <laughs> so, you know, yeah. you know, there's something going on. So you're trying to connect the dots of where it comes from, where it all started, which is going to truly help you get to the root of it and deal with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about, I uh, like for my grandmother and for my mom, um, their pointer finger and their middle finger were the two that the arthritis attacked. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at large yes. intestine and you're looking at circulation. Yes. And yes, it's that opportunity to realize you may have that same pattern where you sit all the time. There is no circulation. And where yes. will it show up? It's going to show up similarly in that same, yeah. same joint. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Interesting. And then, then yeah. you have two, those people, you know, arthritis in the knees. That's just such a common thing mm -hmm. and people yes. accept it. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm yes. going to get it because that's what happens as you get older, but right. really it's, it's dealing with the emotions. And that's one of those stories that we're talking about. Just have to accept that we're getting older. It becomes part of the programming. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Wow. Okay. So you have <laughs> someone who's come to you for a session and you've heard the stories and you're recognizing mm -hmm. them. Maybe you've worked with them a couple of times. So now you're really starting to understand the pattern of the stories they're telling. Do you want to share how working with you can really be so transformative and get people out of, um, as you were talking before about how you don't realize you're in a pattern until somebody else can recognize it for you? Yes. Yes. Yeah, um, so that one is, is very interesting because by the time people come to me, they recognize that there's something going on and they are in a place where they want to have some things answered so they can move along and they don't know exactly how to do that. Now, sometimes though, um, people, although they're ready to to find the answers, they're not always ready to let it go, okay? Sometimes there's still some resistance there, okay? So it's like, you know, it's like, oh, I know something's going on. I want to feel better. I want to, you know, I want those answers. But then they're not always ready to do the work to make the changes that are needed. So sometimes we have to get to beyond the resistance. And part of that resistance, I've found, it has more to do with safety because our brains want to keep us safe want to keep us in the safe zone. And when there's unknown, you know, there's resistance because no, I got to keep you safe. got to keep you safe. So I have found that with working with clients, um, the most beneficial to, to get the process going is to establish an environment of safety to help them to start 
understanding that it is safe to change. It is safe to make the changes that you need to to move forward. You know, this is not going to hurt you. So it's about getting out of the safety zone. And sometimes it takes a little bit for them to feel comfortable and safe enough to actually let the entire story out. Now, one of the things that I've found is that I have a gift of seeing beyond the story. And so oftentimes I already know what's going on before they actually tell me. Because, you know, as a multimodality, I use different tools, including stuff like facial analysis and, you know, and voice patterns and, you know, mannerisms and everything. So I already know what's going on most of the time, but I need the clients to be able to express that on occasion because it sets emotion in the mind and in the body that they're ready to let go of it. So sometimes there needs to be an expression of what they think the story is so we can start desensitizing it in order to change the story. But if they're just holding on to it and holding on to it, they haven't really quite um, gotten to the point where they're ready to truly let it go. So it's about establishing that trust, establishing a safe zone and an environment where they feel open enough to me to be able to let their story out rather than holding it in. Really Does that make sense? It's <laughs> really interesting the way that you've worded that because someone can reach out to a different facilitator and they can, you know, oh, it worked that those techniques worked for a bit, but that didn't yes. really work for me. And it's like all the tools do work, but the question is, do you feel safe enough? And then that word that I brought in with T and with the um with the coaster, do you trust that you can transform? Yes. And yes. you need those yes. pieces in there in order for a forward movement to happen. And exactly, you might not be ready. You might not want to look at it. You might not like the answer that comes back. But if you made that initial appointment to be there, obviously something was telling you you needed to be different. So how can you release that, let that go? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Oh, so powerful. Um, so I wanted to, to put in the piece here um, with the work that I do in, in changing energetically what's around something that's happening. And one of the tools I learned from a naturopath and chiropractor, Dr. Sheldon Deal, uh, works out of Arizona, um, mm -hmm. is the injury recall technique. And that's an mm -hmm. opportunity to change the frequency or change the messaging that's traveling through the body that's holding those emotions tight. And so I know for some people, they don't want to talk about what's happened. Yes. And you, you experience that too, because you use yes. lots of different tools. Um, and this particular one allows for the tension that's been holding on that to be released. And uh, I just yes. wanted to bring it forward because when I found that tool and, and uh, learned it from Dr. Deal, it was one of the most transformative pieces for me realizing that sometimes as much as we were willing in our heads, willing to be there, mm -hmm. there's these other hold back pieces that just don't yeah, want to let us yeah. come forward. And sometimes they're crazy pieces. So with part of that technique is the parameters around an experience. And so I just wanted to share just so the listeners, as they're thinking about, well, why would I have a block? Well, sometimes yeah. it can be, you walked through a doorway and then the experience happened and that yes. walking through the doorway, you walk through a lot of doorways in the day. If every time yes. you walk through the doorway, you don't feel safe, then you're going to have that reaction of I better protect myself because I'm not safe at the moment. All you did was walk through a doorway. It could be like simple like that. And so to be able yeah. to let go of some of those cues so that you can move forward. And I think that takes the pressure off of, um, that idea too that 
uh, even it would be coming from myself would be, well, I'm ready to move on. You know, <laughs> it's just not, it's just not the, the right time or I wouldn't do it that way or know that I don't really want to own that, you know? So, but this takes the, the pressure off because the transformation can be started and then all of a sudden yes. that floodgate opens and it, it comes out. So, um, and I know, like you're saying, when you see those cues that you see from people, mm -hmm. It allows you that yeah. opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's it, it's interesting that you brought up those types of techniques because I've also started integrating um, um, frequency um, balancing because sometimes, like you said, sometimes they're not ready. So you kind of, but there are sometimes there are changes you can make to the frequency before you start doing the work or while you're doing the work to kind of just kind of balance things out and make it a little bit safer. So I actually use frequency scanning and creating balancing harmonics specifically for clients that can kind of help get that process moving without them having to express anything. And so I find some clients that are not quite ready to do some of the other work. Mm -hmm. They're, they're perfectly willing to do that and they'll listen to, you know, some balancing harmonics or they'll listen to listen to some sound files and it doesn't require anything really active on their part so they feel a little safer doing that and so we can start making those changes you know even before we're doing some of the other stuff that requires you know some sort of action on their part and I also wanted to you you mentioned the cues and I just wanted to kind of share with you as well when I originally started doing the the holistic health work that I do. I started working with people with food allergies because it was really prevalent at the time. There were so many food allergies and, and, you know, we hadn't seen, you know, the likes of that, you know, ever. And so that's kind of where my focus is when I first started. As I added more tools and gained more experience and knowledge and everything, food allergies are often associated with cues as well as you were talking about walking through the doorway mm -hmm. it's like you eat something something happens and so your brain associates eating that food with that particular experience mm -hmm. and so every time that you're you know exposed to that food or something the body reacts mm -hmm. to that cue yeah. So I thought that was very interesting that you would bring up the doorways in the queue because that's very much how a lot of food allergies are as well and intolerances. So and there's usually some sort of emotional process in, involved in it as well. And that's mm -hmm. why a lot of that happens. So mm -hmm. lots of times when I I still deal with people sometimes that have um, have food allergens and um, we have to deal with the emotional cues. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that because that that just kind of shows all those those different connectors that we talk about connecting the dots. So yeah, yeah, and I'm thinking about um, those people who have may have multiple food allergies, who mm -hmm. start to think there there aren't any foods for me to eat. You know, it's it's impossible right. for me to eat, and yes. that story then that comes out of that. And then exactly then being able to open the box of saying it might not be true. And if it's not yes. true, what does that mean? And again, I'm not yes. trying to belittle for anybody that's listening that is suffering from some right. of these pieces because it's very, very real and it's very life. It is real. But the fact yeah. that you could say, what if it wasn't real? What if there was a different way? And what if, what I've been believing or what I've been following or the way I've been reacting because it's keeping me safe is, is not necessarily what's needed. And then how would right. it be to let it go? Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. And yeah. And also, you know, like you said, not belittling any of that, but sometimes, and I've helped people reverse their food allergies before. Sometimes if you get in there and you do the work and you get down to the root of it, and you start making those changes, many times those intolerances will go away. Mm -hmm. You know, it's food allergies are immune responses, but why do why does our immune system respond to that food that way? Mm -hmm. That's the question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. What is it that's embedded in there that's causing that response? Mm -hmm. And what can you do to change it? And sometimes it takes a while to do it. I mean, it's not instantaneous, but it is possible. And once you, like you said, open open that box of, well, maybe it doesn't have to be that way, then there's hope. Mm -hmm. And then when there's hope, there's the possibility for change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that you kind of led me right into <laughs> the next question with that, <laughs> that last phrase. Because I was going to ask you how you find people succeed with their sessions if they can let go. So do you want to talk a little bit yeah. about what you noticed there? Well, you know, I have had many clients have had drastic transformations when they come in and they're truly ready to let things go. I have been able to help people reverse their food allergies that they've had since they were children. Um, I had one client, it's, it's very interesting with her, and I love to tell this story because she came to me for one thing. She suffered from cushions and she had pituitary issues and she came to me for one thing. And as we started working and one day, you know, we we're working on this and I said, you know what, with all of this, I'm surprised you don't have, have problems with your feet. And she's like, Actually, I do have problems with my feet. That was something that was a symptom she had never actually revealed to me before. So then we went in and we made some changes. And within the next couple of sessions, she's like, oh my gosh, I can walk barefoot now without my feet hurting and feel like there are stickers and pains going up in my feet. I can go walk on the beach and I can walk without shoes without my feet hurting. Oh my gosh, my life has totally changed. I never really realized that this was holding me back and that there was something that could be changed there to change this condition. So she came to me for one thing, but as we connected the dots, it was really something else that was going on that needed to be changed in order to fully transform her life. So, you know, that's one of my favorite stories because it's just kind of like just kind of came out of the blue because she was, you know, but that's all part of the safety factor as well. I truly believe that the subconscious knows what's priority, what needs to come out when, but you have to get again to that safety zone to let out what really needs to be worked on. So it took mm -hmm. us a couple sessions before we got to that because we were working on something else. And then the subconscious goes, okay, you know what? This is really what's going on that we need to address. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she finally felt safe enough to let that out because words have meaning. And, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes on the conscious level, we hold things back and you need to be able to let the subconscious finally kind of step in and go, okay, here's the real story. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cause what we say and what's really going on are not always the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'm thinking back to, um, you know, in the in the dance world, having been a dance educator for many years, when I got into the healing work was when I lost the ability to walk because all of the stressors in my life had pocketed into the muscles of my feet and turned them off and mm -hmm. turned them into lovely pain centers that would shoot up. <laughs> and uh, I'm thinking as you're talking about feet, um, I have another colleague who has the same issue. Now, yeah. I ended up going into the healing work. She also started in there, but I dove into the work, and now that's what I do for a living. She's still in the um, dance educator profession, but didn't do anything to solve that problem. So where I don't, I walk barefoot, wear flip-flops, you know, the, the um, right. uh, inserts into the shoes are gone, those kinds of yeah. things, and I can rejoice in what my feet can do she's 25 years later still in that same yeah. place. And mm -hmm. so just as people are listening, I just thought I would say that because the question then becomes how long do you want to hold on to something for? Because yes. if you're looking at your life across, you know, the, your decades and you start looking at that 25 years is a long time. What would have happened if you'd let it go back at the beginning? Where would you right. be? 
you know? Exactly, exactly. And yeah, in the case of this client, she was still holding on to a lot of stuff from a failed marriage from before. And then once she was able to finally start letting that go, because she had lost her personal power and everything, she was stuck. And so once she started letting that go, she was able to fully live her life again. And it reflected itself in her ability to walk without pain. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, the flip of that, though, is that when people want to hold on, no matter what you do, it can also affect your life. Mm -hmm. And the opposite, you know, and another story, um, I worked with a client for a long time. He initially came to me because he had a tumor on his neck. And we were able to actually dissolve that tumor, okay? But he had a lot of anger that was bottled up from childhood trauma that he just could not let go. So after that tumor was dissolved because he couldn't let it go. And he was still in that space, even though we thought we had made great strides with him, he went back to that place and his body formed more tumors and it came back on the other side and more of them. So his body actually created more tumors after we were able to get rid of the initial tumor. So that's, you know, that's, you know, the flip side of that now that's an extreme story but it's true Mm -hmm. you know and i i was i kept trying to remind him remember the early success we were able to get rid of that so it is possible you are capable but you have to like move forward and keep moving forward and stop going back to that negative place because your body's just going to keep making more tumors Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so yeah so that's that's the flip of not letting it go mm-hmm. and it's always in our best interest to let it go <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I'm just thinking about the the part about the story that you know because we all go to what we're familiar with so yes. knowing where would you want to go what would that look like and yes. why would you want to transform to that can be a really big unknown for a lot of people. So so they do get stuck in in staying in that place. And I was just thinking about when I learned um, how to muscle monitor and how to ask Mm -hmm. the body what the priority was and then discovering the priority sometimes was nowhere near what I thought the priority was. Like you said about the person came in for one thing and then ended up at the feet. Um, The same thing when, you know, I think, oh, the pain in my shoulder is what I need to focus on today. And then I find out, no, it's uh, the muscles that are in my foot. (laughs) They need to be balanced. And then all of a sudden the shoulder has disappeared. And that's just me playing in the daytime with, with those pieces, but how you can bring that priority piece forward. Do you want to talk a little bit about when you're working with people, finding that priority and then helping them create that vision of where they want to go? Sure. Yeah. So many, many times, just like the the client I just talked about, many times clients will come to me because they have some issue that they want to resolve. Okay. So for instance, I get a lot of people, because it seems to be prevalent these days, a lot of people that come to me, weight loss, they got excess weight they want to lose. Okay. And I have to help them understand that the weight is not the issue, okay? It is not about calories in, calories out, okay? The weight is a symptom of something else, okay? So we need to figure out what that something else is for you. Sometimes it's an emotional guard. It's like wearing an armor. For some reason, they're protecting themselves. They don't want to be visible, okay? So they put on the excess weight as a way of making themselves invisible so people won't look at them, you know, so they kind of blend into the background. See, this a lot with women. Or it can also be a physical guard. 
sometimes there's a lot of toxins in the body and the body is using the fat cells to protect the vital organs from damage because again safety safety first okay mm -hmm. so um so part of that priority is helping the clients see what the priority is and that it's not necessarily what they think it is and it can be or an educational opportunity for them and it could be you know okay i'm going to have to take you by the hand and kind of gently lead you because you know if they dig their heels in and it's like oh no 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 it's this this and this and this I have to take the time to sit and explain to them how all of these pieces connect together and get them to a point where they trust my intuitive abilities and my experience and my knowledge to get them the right answers. So it becomes about the trust factor. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, and you know, and that's as much about the person as it is the knowledge because you know there may be somebody else who you know knows more than I do that they don't like that you know they're not going to work with or there could be someone who knows less than I do but they really like them they prefer to work with them so it becomes about the rapport and about even the connection between practitioner and client to be able to, you know, to lead them to that, to help them understand the priority, to help them trust the priority, to be able to trust the process as we go along as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm hoping as people are listening, starting to see in themselves where they've reached out for help and been successful, where they've reached out for help and then it hasn't been successful, and then being honest with themselves of why it wasn't successful because it's really easy to place blame on the person they've gone to. They didn't know what they were yes. doing. They didn't know how to do it, whatever, but start to turn that story around and go, what is yes. it I'm holding on to that? I'm not willing to when that person is, is saying, I see the problem. I can help you with the problem. And then I'm turning around and going, no, I don't want that. <laughs> You know, right. then, then right. why did you start? <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Like you said, again, it's the story. They, yeah. you know, somewhere deep down, there's probably a story of, I can't get well. This is the way it's supposed to be. So they can go to practitioner after practitioner after practitioner, and they can get many tools and they can get many, you know, wellness plans or whatever. But if deep down they still believe they can't get well, it does not matter who they work with. It does not matter what they do. They will never get well because deep down inside, they truly believe either they're unworthy of having, you know, of having good things or unworthy of having good health or they feel like they're worthless, or they feel like this is just the way things are. And that is definitely a story. And usually that's one that is one of many stories that a person is carrying with them. Sometimes you have to uncover multiple stories in order to get, you know, true movement, because they will get stacked on top of each other. And you have to pull them off layer by layer by layer, because one story shields another story, which shields another story. So, you mm -hmm. know, it's like a book. Sometimes there's multiple chapters in that book that you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, I think that's that's where um, working with people and then the muscle monitoring, when I first learned it, to be able to um, realize how those stories were affecting the different parts of my body. Now, now having returned uh, week after week to work on my feet, <laughs> which the pain was still there. It was in a different place than it was last time, but, you know, and continuing. But then to find out those priorities and how to move through that, it was just such an incredible process um, and I guess what I want to say with that to people listening, that if they're recognizing all of these stories and they're recognizing the fears and the lack of trust and all those pieces to be able to start to wonder what would happen if, what would mm -hmm. be possible? And if someone can identify the priorities, how can that lead me forward rather than me addressing what I think the priority is, because it's safer for me to say, 
it's only to work on my shoulder. It's not to work on my feet as an example. Um, right. but being able to have that whole process come through. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's a complicated, but simple process, which is really interesting to say it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Um, as I was doing that, I had the cramp in my toe. So I just want to say, because it was like the worst cramp ever, the second and third toe just completely got into the conversation. Oh, I was like, wow, what is that trying to tell me? Right. <laughs> so I just want to share that with the listeners, because even um, as I was trying to get the words out, it was like the toes were just folding up. Um, and then my head immediately goes to, you know, which two toes was it? What was the message that was trying to come through? And and um, what am I not listening to as we're listening to each other speak on this? So if for people as they're listening, little signals are coming through, I just wanted to bring that forward that perhaps that's something to um, listen to and then start to think about maybe the last person you did go to for assistance, did you accept or did you reject? Did you actually mm -hmm. go do the work or did you kind of bypass right. the work, not do any homework? Um, right. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, and I'll add too that there is a practitioner for everybody. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so if, if, if you go to a practitioner and it, the vibe just does not flow, it's okay to go to a different practitioner because of the nature of the work that you need to do. You really need to be with someone that you feel comfortable with, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's so, I, you know, so I, I, I'm saying this to tell your listeners that if they go to someone and it just doesn't feel right, don't feel guilty about going to someone else because there's, there's the right, the right person for you will eventually show himself or herself mm -hmm. when you're in the place where you're really ready to do it. Now, any, almost any practitioner that has knowledge and experience can help you in some way, but to get that true transformation, you know, you have to, you have to be able to click with that person. So as you said, it's like dig deep and figure out What's holding you back? If there's something holding you back, if there's a story that you're carrying with you that is not allowing you to make a connection with the right practitioner. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mm -hmm. there's that too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So true. And now I'm thinking about what that leads me to the conversations I've had with several of the, um, several of the, my colleagues is about the person who has a health challenge. So then they, they know that they need to do something. So they book a whole bunch of appointments. So I'm going to go get a massage. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to acupuncture. I'm going to work with some herbs. I'm going to add some essential oils. And then they kind of throw everything at it. Now, I know as a naturopath, you like to work slowly through the pieces and find the way the pieces kind of all come together. Do you want to talk a little bit about how that kind of process could support or not support a person? Sure, sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so first of all, I'm multimodality. So I do use multiple things, but I always tell my clients, like, I'm not tied to one modality over another. I will use what is most beneficial for you at the time. And that may change. Okay. That being said, I have found that while it's admirable to have the zeal of, okay, I'm ready to let this go. Let's do, let's do, let's do it. That's not always the most beneficial for um for the body because if you sometimes if you do too much at a time it can actually backfire and the body you know becomes jumbled and confused and you know that sort of nature you know I will often tell my clients you know I, I do have clients that will come and it's like okay let's just you know I want to I want to meet with you like you know three times a week it's like okay that's great but your body may not be up for that. So, you know, so it's always beneficial to kind of check with the body and see how much time it needs to process and that kind of thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there, I have had clients that 
like you said, it's like, okay, they'll come to me and, you know, we'll do, you know, we'll do some, we'll do some energy healing. We'll do, you know, I'll give them, you know, a nutrition plan to kind of change, you know, the physical structure and everything. And yeah, and they'll go home and it's like, okay, well, I heard this oil is good for this. And I've heard this oil is good for that. And they'll just put all this stuff in there. And that doesn't necessarily work. And it could potentially um, slow their progress without knowing what, each of those things do because mm -hmm. there's an energy to all of it. Okay. And this kind of goes back into my tech background about things being able to flow and the energies flowing along the circuit and things of that nature. Um, for those listening, my first career was actually in tech. Uh, <laughs> my, you know, my, my first training was in engineering, electrical engineering. So I know a little bit about circuitry and all that kind of stuff. So, and I designed databases. So it was about, you know, the flow of things. So if you look at things like the energy of the body flowing along the circuit, much like the circuit in a house, sometimes there are things that are going to block that circuit and it trips the breaker. The same thing can happen in our bodies. If we don't know what, you know, this essential oil or this herb or whatever is going to do to the energy of our bodies when we're trying to do the emotional work or the release work, that could potentially, you know, throw in something that's going to trip your circuit breaker because that energy may not be what is best for your body at, at the time. So it interrupts the flow. So we want to be able to open the flow and get it moving in the right direction without interrupting it. And some things complement and work with our flow. Some things do not. You know, um, uh, back to like, you know, dealing with um, the nutrition part of things just to kind of help you understand this a little bit more, I always tell my clients, it's like, good food is good food, but not all food is good for you. So it's like, you can be eating organic, you know, non-GMO, this, that, and the other. But if your body cannot process and assimilate it at that particular time, it's actually going to work against you. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when you throw too much at something, it works against you. Now, there are things that are very complementary because I will sometimes use, you know, a couple of modalities at a time with the person because they're complementary and one can further the other. But that is where you need someone who is knowledgeable in what they're doing and you can trust them to do what is in your best interest. Mm -hmm. And then you follow their guidance rather than, I'm just gonna go out and just do everything. Mm -hmm. I've often had clients too that will also go see other practitioners. And, you know, so it's like, so there's like competing, um, competing guidance, if you will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that can also, that can also be a problem as well. So mm -hmm. it's like pick one and stay with them. Yeah. You know, is there a reason why you're going to multiples? You know, do you not like what one's doing? If you don't like what that one is doing, then by all means go to another, but don't do both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the idea of, well, having somebody who can oversee. Um, so if you want to go do the massage and you, you want to go to the chiropractor and you, you want to put all those elements in, but knowing that somebody can oversee that and say, now's a good mm -hmm. time to engage with this. Now's a good time yes. to engage with that. And if you're going to go do that, here's what I recommend before you come back to see me next time. And then just being able to build yes. that picture because a lot of people are, they're trying to take, uh, to be self-empowered, but yes. self-empowered with no knowledge or minimal knowledge yes. or the avoidance piece of you have your story. Right. And so you're making the choices based on your story because it helps keep you in that right. center of the story. Um, right. It's important to have that person who can oversee. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And that's one of the reasons why I will usually do wellness plans for my clients when we first start, which kind of takes into account everything that's going on, all of the findings, and make recommendations on what they can do, you know, whether it's nutritionally, you know, energetically, emotionally, you know, physically, or whatever. And usually I, I find that when they have something, when they have a plan, 
I find sometimes it's easier for them because they see that there is a plan. There's a concrete plan. They have it there in writing. Okay, this is what we're going to do. I find that sometimes that helps. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, that's... And, I'm, and I'm always, and I'm, <laughs> I'm always game for a good chiropractor too, by the way. So <laughs> I think everyone should get chiropractic adjustments because it kind of keeps the spine and keeps the, you know, keeps those, you know, nerves and, you know, the signals going to the right place. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. That's my, uh, that's my love of Tai Chi and the spiraling and being able to just mm -hmm. inspire all of those pieces to just be massaged mm -hmm. and, um, uh, brought into balance or harmony, I guess is the best way to say yes. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my mind was, um, thinking about, uh, the next question I wanted to ask you, which you had just so beautifully segued to it, <laughs> which is, um, so now we've got somebody who's in the process of changing their story. How do they have a new narrative so that they actually can let go of the old story um, and that they can actually believe and stand in the new story. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure, sure. Okay, so sometimes when we start making the changes, because we're human, we want to see immediate change, okay? So it's not always immediate. Sometimes it's the little subtle differences, you know? You know, again, it's kind of like losing weight, you know, it's like, you know, you lose a pound and you don't notice it right away. You lose another pound, another week, you don't notice it right away. But, you know, six weeks later, it makes a difference. You see the, you see the change, you see a noticeable change. So sometimes it's not the dramatic changes, it's the subtle changes along the way, and it might take a little bit to notice it. But sometimes there are some, you know, some pretty, you know, dramatic changes right away, um, particularly when when dealing with um, some of the limiting belief work that I do. Sometimes some clients will experience like almost immediate, they can feel something's changed because, you know, they feel lighter. There's, they feel like there's a weight lifted. They don't know, you know, what life is going to be yet, but they feel lighter, okay? And even in that lightness, it allows them to approach life differently and actually change the trajectory of where they're going. And so just being able to do that and having a little bit more confidence and, you know, a little, you know just feeling, you know, like, you know, life isn't weighing you down so much, it changes how you interact with the world and how you interact with others, even how you interact with yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that in itself can start to change the story. And then each little piece that gets rewritten, the story keeps changing and changing and changing. And sometimes it takes a little bit of visualization. So uh, one of the other tools sometimes I will use for clients is having them write down what it is that they really want, where do they see their lives going? What do they want out of life? Now, even that story might change as they move along, but mm -hmm. it's like right now, what is it that you would really like to see? What is it that you would really like to do? What is it that you would really, you know, see for your life? You know, in a perfect world, where do you see yourself? And so if they can write that down and they can start actually visualizing is what it is they really want, it kind of seeps into the seep, um, seeps into the subconscious and they start <clears throat> making those changes because they can visualize that hope. Mm -hmm. And sometimes without that visual visualization, it's harder to make that change because it's like, well, I don't know what I really want. And so, you you know, so oh, even though they're doing all this work and they're trying to make these changes, they, if they don't know re really what they want, they kind of run around in circles. And so mm -hmm. it's like, and so it's like, so we have to, so sometimes we keep releasing the same stuff because they haven't visualized where they're, they haven't put it into the GPS and actually started, <laughs> you know. <laughs> exactly you know they're still driving they're still driving around the block okay it's like okay well i know i need to go over there but i don't know how to get there so they keep driving around the block so they haven't put it in the gps to actually you know 
make the trip there. So, you yeah. know, so I, sometimes I'll use visualization techniques. Uh, I, um, sometimes I will also use tapping techniques. I find that, that, that works a lot for people who tend to be super stressed because it helps them to desensitize the negative stories to allow a more positive story to come into play. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it's about using other tools leading into something else. You know, you know, I always say, I meet you where you are to help you get to where you want to be. And sometimes we have to start slow, start desensitizing. Then we start changing. Then when you start changing, you can start rewriting the story. So sometimes we have to go in and erase the old story so you can have a clean slate so you can start writing a new story. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Perfect. And um, one of the things when I uh, did my first sessions with Touch for Health with my mentor, and uh, he passed me my first piece of paper after the first session with him, and, and he said, now go put this in a binder and start collecting these, these pieces. And yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, and it, yes, I collected them, but then I kind of lost them. But what happens for a lot of people is they don't remember. When you're working energetically, mm -hmm. it shifts and you've already forgotten where you were right. and, and right. what your experiences were and because you're already in the next place. And so right. one of those, those pieces, you know, to think about, and maybe it's you have a, a notebook that you write in, how you felt before a session or how you felt after a session and then to be able to kind of keep track of that and go back six months later not every day but yeah. just go back later and go oh i i was thinking that way yes oh yes. look at how much that story was prevalent for me i can't even remember that story anymore and where is it right. taking you yeah yeah right, right. Yeah. Now, I'll give you a story real quick of someone who saw immediate change, and it was subtle but memorable for them. We literally did it. It was he had issues with with self worth, and he, um, you know, didn't talk, really talk to people or anything because you know he was just kind of. We did two sessions on him. They were very deep sessions, mind you. Did two sessions on him. And he emailed me later and he's like, oh my gosh, people are actually coming up and talking to me. <laughs> so small, subtle, but big for him because mm -hmm. he had self-worth issues, you know, kind of kept himself, wouldn't talk to people, but really wanted to. We were able to get rid of some of that negative vibration, that negative energy that had become part of his program that, you know, um, also vibrated out from him because we all have our own vibrations, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, and our story actually becomes part of that vibration. And that's what other people respond to. And it affects how we interact with people. So we were able to change some of that negative vibration in him. And it starts to draw people to him and people will actually come up and talk to him. And that was so significant for him that he was like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe this. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's another one of my favorite stories. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think people really realize, you know, that the, like you said, you can read the face, you can, we can read the color, what the eyes are doing, the mm -hmm. expressions, everything is telling the story. Um, and other people, whether they realize it or not, subconsciously, they're picking up those yes. cues as well because we recognize mm -hmm. them. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, how powerful. Wow, Michaela, we have talked about a lot. And I'm, I'm seeing like the, the hour came and went, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, and I'm hoping that those people that have been listening in and have stayed with us, that they're really really starting to look at what they're doing, the choices they're making, maybe the people that they've even kept in their lives who have stories that are not yeah. changing. And you, you keep those people in because you hope you can support them. But sometimes that can be really draining to have that repetitive story never change. And mm -hmm. hopefully the listeners now can think about how things can be different and, and how they can be actively pursuing the different. So... Yes. Um, yes. so as I like to set up every 
podcast so that as people listen, they're actually coming through a vibrational shift for themselves. And we set that up with the tea. We set it up with the cards that I pull and the affirmations at the beginning. And of course, the story that you have so graciously shared and brought insight into. How can we get people moving forward now? Do you have a favorite kind of movement piece that you could suggest here for people as they leave the podcast? I I do, I do, I do. So this one is a very simple vagus nerve reset, okay? Vagus nerve, a lot of people are starting to learn a little bit more about it, you know, and um, it's um, it's a very important piece in not only our physical body, but our emotional body as well. And so this reset can help move us from that dorsal or sympathetic um, um, stage, um, stage to the ventral. Okay. And so for those of you who don't quite know about it, just kind of think of like sympathetic is more in the fight or flight mode and dorsal is in the shutdown mode. So, you know, it's like, if you're totally burnt out and just like, I can't go on, that's, that's the shutdown mode. If you're like in that fight or flight, super stressed, you know, you know, just kind of anxious, uh, that's going to be the sympathetic. Okay. We want to get to that ventral state. That ventral state is, you know, where we're grounded and and we see the potential in life. It opens us up to hear new stories and we can connect with ourselves better and the people in the world around us. Okay. So that's what we want to do. And this technique is very simple for resetting that vagus nerve. And you can use this anytime, anywhere. And, you know, just to kind of give yourself a lift. If you start feeling like just feeling wonky, that's one of my favorite words because, you know, <laughs> just, you know, so if you just feel like you're just feeling wonky, just try it. You know, it's not going to hurt anything. You know, you can't you can't sit there and reset your vagus nerve, you know, too much. OK, because it likes being happy. All right. So and if <laughs> and if it doesn't need resetting, it still doesn't hurt. OK, so so here it is. It's very simple. You're going to sit. You're going to, you know, I find that if you sit upright, have a nice posture with it, you know, it helps. Mm -hmm. You know, Michelle's all about the posture. So <laughs> we're going to sit upright. We're going to look straight ahead and you're going to keep your head straight. Okay. So we're going to keep your head straight. And then you're going to just move your eyes to the right as much as you possibly can without moving your head and just hold it there until you have an automatic deep breath or sigh. There you go. <laughs> I got the on. <laughs> yeah. And, then, and if you're going, well, what am I looking for? You'll know it when you get it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to do the same thing on the left side. You're just going to move your eyes all the way to the left as much as possible. Don't move your head. Hold it there until you get the there you go. <laughs> and that's all there is to it. And, you know, if you want to, you can add like a deep breath in on the end and let it out and that resets that nerve and it kind of can help lift your state a little bit you know kind of get you out of that that shutdown or that fight or flight and more into the you know grounded state you know open and connected so that's my move for today i love that move i give that to my clients a lot i have them do it like after a session when i feel like they need to just kind of reset you know just to kind of let everything sink in you know, and I tell them this is a tool you can use, you know, on your own when you're at home anytime, you know, so anytime you're feeling wonky or you feel like you're just kind of stressed or, you know, you're not sure what's going on, just reset that nerve because worst case, it opens you up to understand what's going on. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. And and then too, you have when the nervous system does that calm, your choices are different. Your filter is different. Yes your response yes. is different and it could be yes. as that as simple as that so i was just thinking about you know the number of meetings that people have where they're staring at their computer screen and yeah. being able to take that moment where they've been locked in a position because that yeah. signals to the body that that holding on piece that freezing piece and then to be able to reset before they talk about what it is they're supposed to be sharing with the group or um, before they give an opinion or start talking about something that has a 
real emotional value to them. It would be a yes. great way to calm the system down for that. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And like I said, you can do it anywhere, you know, anytime, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, I love that technique. <laughs> awesome. Well, mine is going to add to what you just did. So if people were to do that, then I would be making the connection to the forward motion. So the fight or flight piece where you're going to freeze and hold, mine's going to be taking the second part of that. So if you put your okay. fingertips on the forehead, those are the emotional stress release points, um, the words that are used in Touch for Health anyway. And um, mm -hmm. what you can do is imagine yourself moving forward into that next spot. So if you've spent some time thinking about here's where I want to be, and that old story I want to let go of, you're going to step yourself into the new story, but with your fingertips on your forehead. So if you've reset with the eyes and calm the nervous system down, that step forward is going to be with that security, that trust, um, that safety net there. And you can just imagine a forward step into your new place, or you can imagine taking a walk that goes down a pathway that leads you into whatever your future piece is. And the fingertips on the forehead allows the blood to come from the back of the brain to the front to help you resolve yeah. and come up with new ideas. And so as you're creating that new vision or that new opportunity, this can help you bring in some of the details. What does it smell like? Awesome, awesome. awesome what does it taste awesome. like? Yeah. Uh. Okay, I'm going to add that to my clients as well. So thank you for that. So <laughs> it's it's amazing how we just flow and everything just kind of came out together, you know, with the, all the different pieces and, you know, to be able to give people extra tools that they can use mm -hmm. and how the tools that that you presented and the tools that I presented can be used together, you mm -hmm. know, synergetically. So mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to add that to my clients as well. So yeah. Awesome. That helps with the vision to be able to rewrite the story as we've been talking about these stories, getting yeah. rid of the old stories, creating new stories. Yeah. Yeah. And then that one piece that came up too is how long do you want to hold on to that story for? So if you are holding on to a story and you know, or you've identified it today because of some of our conversations about different people and things that have happened, then, then take a look at that calendar for yourself how long do you want to be holding on for and when do you want to be that person that you really want to be and so then to yeah. be able to look at it um how can people find you Michaela because if they they think you're the person that might be able to help them take that forward step how can they find you okay well they can easily reach out to me on my website at www.livingnaturallyforlife.com and I do offer um, what I call discovery call, where we can sit and we can chat and you can tell me about, you know, what's going on, what you, you know, what you want to accomplish. We can see if we mesh, you know, you can get a good feel for my personality and if I'm the practitioner for you. I know I'm not everyone's cup of tea, <laughs> pun intended. Um, so <laughs> we can have, we can, we can have these, we can have these little discussions so you can decide, you know, if you would like to work for me and work with me and then we can move on from there. But the discovery call is complimentary, so it doesn't cost you anything, you know, other than your time. And, um, yeah, so, you know, feel free to reach out to me on my website um, and, you know, schedule a discovery call or you can just schedule, you know, direct consultation or while you're there, you can even, you know, grab some of my free gifts as well. And I have lots of affirmations, ebooks. I even offer, if they're interested, a free bioresonance emotional scan. So we can see Ooh, what the sweet. top emotions are that you're dealing with and how they're affecting your body. It's one of the first pieces of that puzzle that you'll need to know. So, and if they're interested in that, they can go to livingnaturallyforlife.com, um, question mark, um, free scan. No, actually, no, take that back. Free scan, just livingnaturallyforlife.com slash free scan. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. And we'll put that in the notes as well. So when people are looking at the description, they'll be able to find the link there and click right on it. So that'll make it nice and easy. So, 
Oh, Michaela, thank you so much for another wonderful session. And it's always a delight to dig deeper into how we can reach out to people and support them to find the right way forward. Um, so thank you so much for that. Well, thank you once again for having me. This was a great conversation. I always enjoy, you know, chatting with you. There's always a wealth of information that that comes out. So, and I feel like, you know, we're here to help heal the world. And these conversations that we're having, I find, I feel like people need to hear them in order to find their next level of healing. So thank you mm -hmm. for having me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right, so this is uh, coming to the close actually for season three. So we're, we're just down to the last couple episodes before we dive into what will be season four. We have been really looking at the transformational process that happens when people reach out into their authentic selves and create the magic that's possible for them. Our season has had several publications, so if you haven't been listening, then I invite you to go back, check out some of the recordings that are there. We have uh, usually something at the beginning of the month that has to do with the tools and techniques that I'm using. Then at the end of the month, I have my sister come on and we talk about compassionate living, how we're helping other people. And also we catch up with the Moyo family in Malawi and see what's happening for them and the resources they have available to them, how they're living their life um, to be able to really reflect on how we can be a more authentic and, and more supportive in the lives that we're living ourselves. So thank you so much for joining us. This is Be Well with Michelle Greenwell, and I wish you the courage to transform and to change your stories. Take care.